Keith Hilson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Shop back with another instrument review, or maybe more appropriately, a re-review in a way here. Um, this is an instrument we've taken a look at before in a couple of different ways, but I really haven't had a chance to do a little bit more in-depth review of it since it was released almost two years ago, specifically the A47 XPS Peter Steiner Artisan Bach Stradivarius. So, this, like I said, this is not a new model. We originally talked about this a couple of years ago at uh, the Midwest Clinic. Uh, we had a chance to get one of these in and we were able to do an unboxing video with it, but I unfortunately really haven't had a chance to do a little bit more in-depth review because we've been waiting on more there. Um, with all of the you know, with all of the demand for this model here, it's taken back a while to start getting them back out into the wild as it were. And so after, a little bit of a wait here. We've finally gotten our next Peter Steiner model in the shop here as well. So again, I've talked about this model before, but I'm really excited to talk about it a little bit more in depth and let you hear it in a little bit more in depth as well. So I'm gonna play it for you. We're gonna talk about the experience afterwards. I'm playing all of this today on my trusty Bach 5G. <laughs> As I mentioned, the 
A47 XPS is not a new model. This has been something at least that we've known about for almost two and a half years. It was the winter of 2021. That word started to leak out a little bit about this model. You know, we started to see some photos with Peter and then finally Bach came out and officially announced it as a model. It really didn't start becoming available until almost the winter of 2022. Like I said, I had a chance and I did a review of this model at the 2021 Midwest Clinic in Chicago. We were able to do an unboxing video with it. But since that time, we've just been waiting for more of this model to be coming in. And certainly I've had any number of requests for folks to actually talk about this model, play it. And I'm so glad that we've gotten another one of these in person. So just as a quick review, what's going on with this? This is again, part of the Artisan line from Bach, which is um, their kind of taking you know the the, the standard the, the classic 42 Stradivariuses and giving them a little bit more modular capability and a number of different design features. Um, the A47 bell is a little bit different bell than the 42 bell. Uh, they've changed up the 47 hand slide. It's a little bit different setup as well. A um, number of different features with it. Obviously, they've had some different valve options. And of course, just like as with all of our other modular setups out there, um, everything is interchangeable. So. Starting a couple years ago, Bach went back and said we, they were trying to revitalize the artisan line a little bit, and they took the opportunity to partner up with Peter Steiner to create this model here. So what we have going on with this model is this is the 47 Bell, so a little bit different taper than the 42, um, lightweight gold brass with the cut bell. We've talked about what that does on instruments in the past. I'll talk about what it does with this, but it does have the removable bell flare here. Um, we've got a standard yellow brass tuning slide here, reverse, which again, compared to the standard 42s, the standard 42s are standard tuning slide versus the reverse here, which is gonna change some of the airflow concepts. Um, we have one of the, uh, the Bach valves here, a little bit different setup on this valve, a little bit more open than your standard 42 valve. Um, it's got the standard 47 hand slide on. It's a single bore 47 hand slide, yellow brass outer tubes, uh, yellow brass crook on the bottom, removable lead pipes, of course. But of course we have the very unique x wrap, at least unique in the US. Those of us who kind of pay attention to trends, we've seen this wrap out, in, especially in European models for quite a number of years. They utilize the X-Wrap on here to, um, I think, some really good effect. It gives us a little bit different response in ways that we've talked about in the past and we'll talk about again here. In, I've had a few people ask, since we originally had this model and since I had a chance to play it at Midwest, people asking about the experience. And honestly, it had been so long, I was trying to cast my mind back and trying to remember what's really going on with this horn. Well, it didn't take me three notes when we got this one in to remind myself, oh yes, that's what this horn is. And that's why I was so excited about it. To me, you know, this is an instrument I think that demonstrates so well what the whole cut bell phenomenon is doing for us. Um, and why you know so many makers have really you know latched onto this. Okay, yes, we've got the portability factor, and I don't think that should be ignored. Um, the uh, the Steiner model comes with a fantastic cut bell case uh, designed with Bach and with guard bags. Um, it's great. It's you know it's among the most convenient cut bell cases I've seen out there. So I think they've done a really nice job with that. So we do have the convenience and portability, but for me, it's the playing, the sound, the response, just the balance you get out of this that is so interesting. To me, this is an instrument that is incredibly vibrant. I feel like just immediately I get just this, this beautiful complex color, but it remains really, really stable. And so as I'm going through and playing, whether I'm trying to play something, you know, really, really soft in, you know, legato and very, very lyrical, like the, like the Rimsky-Korsakov second movement that I did a little bit of, or of course, all of the work that Peter does, it, it, it gives you this beautiful color. I mean, there's a warmth to it, but it never gets, it never gets overly broad, you don't lose definition. It still keeps some of the core, but it gives you a lot of ability, flexibility within it. As you start to push through it, you get this wonderful vibrance and almost a little bit of brilliance out of it, but it's controlled at the same time and it's incredibly stable. One of the things I really like about this instrument, and I think it's a combination of the hand slide, the valve setup, the reverse tuning slide on the artisans. I've really liked that. 
you know, the bell setup, everything working together at upper dynamics, I just feel like I have so much control. Everything is just incredibly stable. When I'm going through and I'm trying to play, you know, Tannhaus or whatever it is, I feel like every note just drops into place. And there can be certain instruments where I can get that, you know, you know, for lack of a better term, that square tone, right? My teachers used to call it a brick-shaped note where everything is just locked in if you were looking at the waveform. There are instruments I can get to do that, but it doesn't necessarily come naturally. This feels like everything, you're just dropping a peg in the hole and it just sits there and I can really open up with it and it it fills up the room. But again, it's such a, it's a, such a balanced sound and it has such color to it. Um, then we've got the x rap of course. Um, and this falls into a trend that I think we've seen over the last, I'd say, especially three, four years or so. Um, and I think at the continuation of some of the trends we've seen where you know, things have been dying back a little bit from you know, the, the prior era where it was just big open setup, axial flow valves. Everybody wanted that, op that lower register, that trigger register on tenor just to be super open, as, as bass-like as possible. I think what we're seeing is, along with a lot of other things, that's dialing back a little bit. People want to have a little bit different push, a little bit different resistance. And that gives you, in a certain way, if you play with it, if you approach it the right way, it gives you some really unique either response characteristics, sound characteristics. Um, and the x wrap here on the Steiner, I think, is a really good example of that. I tried to do a little bit of just a little bit of a, a Bach cello suite um, in the lower register so you could hear what's happening down there. What I find with this is you get a, just a little bit different immediacy in the response, but it's not like it's compact. It's not like a closed wrap where you just feel like everything is really tight and you're losing so much of the, the overtone structure with it. With this, I just get this really nice immediacy to it. It still maintains a lot of the weight in the sound and you do change the timbre just a little bit. I think it gives you just a little bit more of the upper frequencies. It gives you this little bit different insistency down there which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. I like the same thing about the, the Con, the 88 HNV, with that really unique tight minic wrap as well, where I think if you approach it the right way, it actually gives you a little bit different color options that I think can be used to really, really great effect. And again, what I like about it is I don't feel like I have to change as much what I'm doing in that trigger register. In fact, I found there were times where I found myself like, okay, I don't have to compensate for that trigger register. You know, we get used to changing the airflow more to, you know, to accommodate what the airflow needs are. With that x wrap I actually found myself like, no, 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 I can, I can keep the airflow moving more like I would be in that, uh, you know, really in the, the, the staff register, just below the staff register. I don't have to completely change my approach. This feels a little bit more natural with that in a certain way. Um, so overall, like I, you know, I, I've said before, um, I think this is, you know, it's a fantastic trombone, period. And again, having a chance to put hands on this and play it again, it reminded me of why that is. Uh, I think it, it, it continues to be a fantastic addition uh, from Bach. I'm glad that these are starting to make their way back out into the world again. And as a side note there, because of course there have been some questions about this, um, you know, we know that over, over the many years there have been a little bit ups and downs in terms of box quality and everything. They freely admit this. This horn looks great. It plays great. It was, it was fantastic right out of the box. Um, Bach has, you know, spoken at length about what they've been trying to do to really increase the, um, the, the, the evenness of their instruments increase the quality control. And I think, again, this is a good example. I've been seeing that trend with them. This is a really great example of that. I really appreciate all of the work they, their teams are putting in on it. And frankly, again, as we know, at this level, there is artistry that goes into this, this level of instrument. This does a really great job of showcasing all of that. So really glad that we were able to have this back in and to share this instrument. If you've had the opportunity to have an experience with the A47 XPS Steiner model, or if you have questions about this, because there have been lots of questions about this, please leave them in the comments. We'd love to have you as a part of our community. If you have not already done so, please consider subscribing to our channel, hitting the thumbs up on the video here if you're enjoying it. And of course, you can always find us on Facebook and Instagram. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>